welcome to the Have Naming Podcast. My name is Christy. It is the 23rd of, no, it's not. It's the 22nd of November, um, 2016. My oldest daughter turned 13 yesterday. I am the mum of a fully fledged teenager and she's on Instagram. Of all the social media sites though, I guess that one's probably quite possibly the tamest, um, I think. Um, so she, she has an old Apple iPhone that she uses as an alarm. It doesn't have a SIM card in it, so she can't take it places. <laughs> so in that regards, it's not a bad thing. Um, so yeah. So how are you guys? Um, I know that it has been at least a month. Um, and I know that because after the last time I recorded on the Saturday, I had the knitting guild and then uh, we had a knitting guild meeting yesterday. Not yesterday, on the weekend. Yesterday was Monday, not Saturday. Uh, so yeah, so how are you? I hope you are keeping well. Um, I am recovering from some sort of viral infection with a touch of tonsillitis. So if I sound a bit croaky, that's why. And if I seem a bit flat, yesterday I was so busy. So yes, it was my daughter's 13th birthday yesterday. But not only was it her 13th birthday, she also she's in uh, the SRC at school. So if you don't know what an SRC is, it's the Student Representative Council. She had to get up in front of her grade and give a speech. And then they, there was a range, you know, a few kids that did it. Got up, gave speeches, and then she they voted <clears throat> based on that. It's not a popularity contest. Well, not really. And so she got in. So yesterday they had a morning tea with the, uh, an induction ceremony. She had to, she was presented with a badge and she had to um, uh, recite a pledge of some sort. So school drop off is at nine. So I dropped off the kids, dropped off Adelaide at preschool. I had an hour to kill because the morning tea thing was at 10.30. And so by the time I dropped Adelaide off at school, it was around 9.30. So I took my youngest son Judah to uh, into one of the local towns and got his hair cut because um, it's just been like down here. Of like he's had a cold recently, so I'm just constantly pulling hair out of his snot and snot out of his hair. And um, so I went and got that done, and then I went to the school, and then I went and did grocery shopping, and then I came home and cooked uh, cupcakes for my daughter's birthday. And then I picked the kids up from school and then I came home and I washed up the lunch boxes and then I cooked lasagna because that's what she wanted for dinner. And then while that was cooking or while the mince, like the sauce was cooking, I went and wrapped her presents and then I had to come back and make the white sauce and then I had to put it all together. And then I put that in the oven and then I had to make icing and ice the cupcakes and then I had to sit down and eat dinner. So by the time they went to bed, which wasn't until like nine o'clock last night, because cooking lasagna takes forever. And we were busy Sunday, so I couldn't even cook the sauce on Sunday and then put it in the fridge for the following day. So it's been, yesterday was insane and I like... We went out shop. Judah and I went out shopping this morning. And I'm sitting down and I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm so tired. I could sleep. So if I seem a little bit flat, it's just because I'm really, really, really tired today. And that's okay. We all have days like that. Um, I'm not the, I'm like the energizer bunny. I just keep going until I run out of batteries and then I fall down. Does anybody do it? Okay. The ener Is the energizer bunny like... A purely Australian thing. If you haven't heard of the Energizer Bunny, can you tell me of Ravelry or something? Comment below. What are you talking about? And then, you know, maybe I can explain it further. So, we are in late November, obviously. So, it's the very end, tail end of spring. And we have had really hot weather. I'm actually dreading the next couple of months. I think summer's going to be a scorcher. Um... Which isn't necessarily good in terms of um, bushfires and stuff. That's a little bit scary. We've already had some major ones around Sydney. Um, 
so I don't know. I would. Oh, blah, 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 there are no words. Um, I kind of kind of wish that our climate was a little bit more temperate. Maybe I'm just getting. It's just I'm getting older, and so I feel the heat more. But or maybe not. Maybe it was because I grew up near the coast, and even though we weren't like right near the beach, we still got those. like the, the, the cooler sea air where I grew up. And now I've moved inland. Like I'm up in the mountains and it gets quite humid. And can be quite dry up here. So humid and dry, the, those two don't make sense. But you know, like it's dry as in hot. <laughs> you don't have that cool sea air. But it's stinking like it's ridiculously humid because it is. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, like I said, I'm flat today. I'm a bit tired. My brain's decided it doesn't work. So hello, if you are new, hey, thank you so much for joining me. And if you are returning, welcome back. Um, it's been about a month. I think I said that. Um, what have I said? Because I've started this like 10 times already. I've forgotten. I've forgotten what I've said, what I've, what I've told you and what I haven't told you. So essentially, the lowdown, in case I haven't said it already. Um, the, after the, the day after the last time I recorded, I had weird RSI style symptoms in my right forearm. Um, thankfully, a massage helped, but uh, if I get too tired, I still get the same kind of pain down my right forearm. So I haven't been knitting... I'm still knitting a huge amount, um, but for that, uh, for at least a week or two, I really wasn't knitting a huge amount because I was in pain. Um, and I had my husband going, no, you can't knit, don't knit, you're not allowed to knit. Because um, he was quite concerned that I had RSI developing. Um, <clears throat> so I laid off the knitting for a while, then he got gastro, um, and then... A week after he had gastro, we all got gastro. Um, and then a week after that, my four-year-old came down with some weird fluy virusy thing. She had really high temps. And she was really, really, really sick. And then um, she didn't get gastro. She just got this flu bug thing. And we were like watching her like a hawk waiting for her to come down with gastrina. Not at all. The baby had it. Everyone else in the house had it except her. I don't know how. I don't know how she managed to dodge that one. But anyway, we were all... No, gastro was all over and done with. And then she came down with this um, a flu kind of bug. Like viral chest infection, really high temp sort of thing. Um... And it upset her tummy as well. So she was having a lot of issues um, with having like a sore, sore tummy for like three or four days, if not more. And then just as she started to come good, I got sick. So I got whatever she had, but I also got tonsillitis with it as well. And I think it's a viral tonsillitis because it's going away by itself rather than being a bacterial one. So that's where I've been. I've been sick. So, um... It's not been fun. I've not had a fun month. But that's okay. I can't, I mean, can't be helped yet. So what do you think of my new setup? I thought that I would sit on the couch instead of um, at the table because it's just more comfortable for starters. Um, yeah, what do you think? And it's better than sitting on the floor too. I can stretch my legs. I'm not sitting on my knees. I'm not competing with children trying to come into the room. I mean, the only child that's here is asleep. So, I, I think this is nice. I think this is nice. I think I like it. I think I'll be doing this in future. Um, our windows are getting replaced next week. <clears throat> so I won't be recording next week. Um, but all of this will change anyway. So I'm likely to stay on the couch because it is just that little bit more comfortable. But uh, it will will change again <clears throat> just because we're having renovations again so 
Yes. All right, let's talk knitting because that's what you guys are here for. And I could probably rub it on about the last four weeks. But I won't. So for, for starters, I'll show you my Emily's favorite socks. I'm knitting these on two millimeter needles. The dark brown is the Knit Picks Stroll for, in Fedora. And the um, Cookies and Cream style yarn is Knit Picks uh, Stroll Tweed in Oyster Heather. I really regret not knitting these on a 2.25 millimeter needle. It's a different gauge to what I'm used to. Um, I generally knit socks on two and a half millimeter needles. So it was a different gauge. Um, and the people that I've spoken to that had knit this at their normal gauge with the same, um, same number of stitches and everything said that it worked out huge. They ended up with these really huge socks that they couldn't wear. So I knew I didn't want to do them on a 2.5 millimeter, even though I had some people just saying, like, you know, when I ask questions from another race, saying, just do it at your normal gauge. No, I don't want to do that. Um, <clears throat> so I don't regret using a smaller needle. I just regret doing it on such a small needle because A, it's, they're taking forever. I know it's two at a time and it's like 80 something stitches. So it's a lot, it's a lot more stitches per sock than what I'm used to. Um, but I, the gauge is a little bit too tight, so it's not. I think the premise of the Emily's favorite socks is they're a little bit slouchy. These won't be. These will be your normal run of mill socks. Maybe even slightly tighter. I can get them over my heel, but only just. So I'm going to have to make sure that I've got plenty of room in the gusset for my foot to get in and through. So I do like them. I love the combination. It, it's like, it's like, I, why do I always end up doing this? I always end up, um, comparing my yarn to food. I'm a hungry, hungry mum, obviously. So this, the dark brown reminds me of those, you know, dark chocolate waffle boat things and then the cookies and cream ice cream. So that's that. Um, and they are living in my Jibby Russo's bag with their funky purple lining. And um, yeah, it's actually a perfect bag for two at a time socks. I'm really um, happy with the size. So yeah, so that's that. Two millimeter needles, knit picks. You can find all the information on my project, project page on Ravelry. Um, and I think I'll be knitting these when I'm 50. So... <clears throat> Because the two millimeter needles, it just takes forever. And I was at church on Sunday knitting on them. And I knit on them for pretty much the whole sermon, which went for about 20 minutes. But I found that about the 10, 15 minute mark, my hands were starting to get a little bit tired. And I was getting a little bit bored of knitting on them. So it's, they're my small chunks socks. So I knit on them in small chunks. So they will eventually get done. It's just going to take a very long time. Um, and thankfully it's two at a time. So I'm not going to get second sock syndrome with those socks, which makes me so happy. Um, next up, I mentioned last time I recorded that I was going to sew up the dress on my uh, little girl monkey dress. Uh, because of my RSI style issues, I didn't do it. Um, and in fact, I think I started intentionally putting it off because I didn't want to do it. I don't know why, um, but then I got a message from Moira uh, from the Knitting Institute's podcast asking me if I'd sewn it up yet, so I sewed it up. Um, so I am happy that it's done. I am really, I've got buttons. Um, <clears throat> I do have buttons. Um, so I'm really happy that it's done and that um, she's just about finished. I still need to do the sleeves on the cardigan. I've kind of knit, lost my knitting mojo. I want to cast on something new. I don't, but I don't want to knit on what I've already got. And I don't really want to knit on what I want to cast on. I'm in a weird headspace today. Um, I think it's just because I'm tired after yesterday. So I've just got to do the sleeves. I may sit down tonight um, 
and watch a couple of knitting podcasts and um and do the sleeves um so yeah I, I don't know I um I think I might just do that we'll see I'll see how I feel because that would be good to get that done but I don't know I don't know I don't know I really want to cast I was going to knit two little monkeys because I was going to knit one for my cousin's other little girl um so I'm not but I really want to knit the cat so I don't know whether to knit to just finish her off and then knit the cat and then go back and do another monkey or what. I guess it depends on what yarn I find first. <laughs> so I'll probably find the yarn for the cat and then feel very convicted to do another monkey and then just get on with it. If you have knit these before, if you've knit one of these before and you managed to get your arms to sit down by her side, can you tell me how you did it? I have a feeling I've overstuffed the arms, but it doesn't seem no matter what I do, I can't get her arms to just stay down. They just want to flop out. I should ask on the uh, little cotton rabbits group on Ravelry. Maybe I'll just do that. Maybe I need to make floppier arms. Because it's just the arms. The arms end up bugging me. I'm sure if I just kept pulling on them and moving the stuffing down, they would eventually... Oh, I don't know. Like a four-year-old cares, right? So, yeah, she's done. The collar doesn't want to really sleep flat either, but that's okay. Oh, there it is now. Look at that. Look, I crocheted and everything, people. I don't crochet. She's so cute. She's so sweet. So that's that. That's her cardigan. I have some sweet little yellow buttons, but I'll show you those next, like when it's all finished. Okay, so next up in my knit and stitch bits bag. I don't think Katie's making bags anymore. She has been on break. Like her shop's been taking a short break for a while. So Katie, if you're watching this, can you send me a message and let me know if you're going to be selling bags again? So this, I just, I would just like to know because I really like Katie's bags. They're nice. So this is my uh, slip stripe socks by Christy Payne in the 80s t-shirt colorway from what's the name of that shop turtle pearl so turtle pearl is known for herself striping on etsy but she also has an art fire store um where she has other colorways and so you can't really tell because the lighting in here is dodgy but that's like i like to call it pastel neon so this is, <clears throat> I've obviously done the heel turn. Um, I don't like the fact that the pattern goes all the way down to the bottom of the heel. And so I'm currently debating whether to rip it back and just do a normal slip stitch heel. I just do not like that. Will it stop me from wearing the sock? I don't know. Possibly. <clears throat> and I know that sounds ridiculous, but there is just something about it that I don't like. And I don't know what that is. Um, the heel turn itself is fairly straightforward, except that you do it in garter stitch. But what she doesn't tell you when you start to knit in the round again, that you actually need to start with a pearl row. Um, so that bit was omitted, and that kind of bugged me a little bit. Um, the gusset is... Um, because, like, nobody's going to see it, right? Nobody's going to see that there is just this line of stocking stitch on the bottom of my sock. But I'm going to know it's there, and that is going to bug me. Um, the gusset decreases are done on the foot rather, down than, rather than down along the side of the foot, which is really cool. Um, <clears throat> and it'll be interesting to see how it fits and what it looks like when it's finished. Um... So it's a fun pattern and it just, it looks a bit like a, I don't know, some kind of weird telephone. Hi Margaret, how are you? Don't you think? It looks weird. Um, so I don't know, I'm... I 
I don't know. I don't know whether to rip it back. I took it to the Knitting Guild on Saturday and showed my friends and they've just gone, you know, if it fits um, and you'll still wear it, then just leave it. It's just, you know, don't, just keep going. So I don't know. I'm kind of, I've kind of stopped knitting on it because I don't like it. Um, but I don't, I don't know what that is. I don't know if I've stopped knitting on it because I don't like the yarn anymore. If I've stopped knitting on it because I don't like the pattern anymore. If I've stopped knitting on it because I don't like the heel. If I've stopped look, knitting on it because it looks weird. I don't know. It's sending me crazy. Because there's nothing wrong with this pattern. And the reason I chose it, aside from the fact that it's a different construction in terms of the gusset, um, there's nothing wrong with this sock. It's quite fun. So I think, I think in the end I will leave it. I've just got to get over myself. And, um, because there's nothing wrong with it. And ultimately, when you've got the heel on, I mean, nobody's going to see it. Nobody's going to care. So, it's just me. So, I don't, I don't know. I think in the back of my head, I've kind of convinced myself that because it's not a slip stitch heel, that this isn't going to last as long as a normal slip stitch heel. Which is ridiculous, because I've got the, um... Those other socks where you, what's that one? Vanilla is the new black socks where the, there's no slip stitches for the heel. And I, that doesn't seem to bug me as much. So I don't know. I'm crazy. So I think I've just got to, I've just got to suck it up and keep knitting on my weird phone socks. <laughs> so that is that. Um... I've also been knitting on my, um, Snowflake Pullover by Tin Can Knits. I'm knitting this, um, in Zara, Filatura de Crosses Zara. One of the colours is colour 49. I think that's the mauve. Um, and the other colour is number nine. And I think, I think I've got, I think that's right. So, yeah, so it's uh, extra fine superwash merino. I'm knitting it on 3.25 millimetre needles, which is what the pattern called for. I'm a little bit surprised that I hit gauge because I ne usually don't. I've usually got to go up a needle, needle size. Um, I'm pretty sure it's 3.25. Um, for the um, main body, I'm knitting it my uh the owner of my lis suggested that i do it on a 40 centimeter needle because i was getting a ladder when i tried to magic leap it so that's what i've done i've been quite happy with that and it's looking pretty good um i want to try it on my judah my judah's 20 months old i want to try it on him and just make sure it fits because i'm really concerned that the neck opening the head opening I used a cable cast on, don't ask me why. So it's not particularly stretchy. And even though it's got this flap, I'm just, I'm paranoid that it's not going to fit. So I'm knitting it for my niece in Canada and I'm trying to get it finished so that I can get it to her. So she can at least get some wear out of it this winter, just in case for whatever reason she doesn't fit into it next year. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, so I've been working fairly steadily on that. I have done... Uh, the full length of the body so um once you get to the end of the body you repeat the um is it moss stitch i can't remember um whatever it is i think moss stitch is different anyway you repeat whatever this stitch is here for the bottom so i had to go buy a new knitting needle today because i don't have a 2.75 millimeter that is short enough and i wasn't going to try and magic loop it i think i'll have to magic loop the sleeves um, because I don't think a 40 centimeter, I think a 40 centimeter needle, needle is going to be too long, but I think it was just, I think the reason I was getting a ladder was that it just, the hundred centimeter needle just wasn't long enough for the number of stitches that I had. So I know that probably sounds weird. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I've been quite happy doing it. Just it's nice just working completely in the, in the round. And I've been watching a lot of podcasts recently where they talk about using those tiny little nine inch circular needles. And I love those. And I've been so keen to buy another pair. 
Um, I've tried them in bamboo and I didn't realize when I bought them in the bamboo, I bought them in bamboo because they were pretty. Um, I didn't realize when I bought them in bamboo that if you are a, already a tight knitter, the bamboo is grippy and will grip your yarn even more. Um, and so, yeah, so it ended up being quite painful in the end to work with them. Um, but it could also be the fact that they're just really tiny little needles and the way I knit, my, you know, like they're just, the needle itself is too short for the way that I knit. <coughs> and with this whole RSI thing that I had going on in my arm, I don't think I want to, I don't want to muck around with that. So no nine inch um, needles for me so yeah so that's it I'm enjoying I'm still enjoying it the excuse me the yoke was a pain in the bum I can't get in the um I can't get in the lace pattern wrong uh, and even in the end even after I had all the stitches and I can't like I ended up writing down um, on the chart how many stitches should be at the end of each row and all the rest of it even though I had all of that, I still ended up with more stitches down the bottom here, which I don't understand. I don't understand how I did that. Um, but anyway, I just, it was only two extra stitches. So I ended up casting on one less stitch, like for the underarm. And between you and me, nobody's going to know and nobody's going to tell. It's one stitch each side. So, but that's that. It's so cute. It's so, so cute. So I'm looking forward to getting stuck back into that now that I have the right size needle again. So, and that is in my knitter's friend bag. Um, so my, my, I don't know if she's still knitter's friend on Etsy, but my friend Emma has just started dyeing yarn as well. And it's Emma Louisa Yarns, I think. Um, so she's now making project bags and selling deliciously coloured yarn as well. So, and my other friend, Jen, has also started dyeing yarn and selling that, but she's not, she's not selling it online yet. She's just selling it through a local shop. So, but apparently it's been selling out. So I'm hoping she goes online. She's got really nice colours. Um, but I have dye. I don't have yarn, but I do have dye, but I don't have the... I don't know. I really enjoyed dyeing when I was doing it. I should probably do it again because it is fun, but I don't know. I, just, I don't know. I don't feel like I've got the energy to do anything at the moment. So maybe when I'm feeling as tired and yuck as I do, I shouldn't be thinking about it. Uh, I did cast on something new. This is the, I think it's series. C E R Y S uh, hexagon bl blanket. <clears throat> so um, I've kind of hopped on the bandwagon with the whole scrappy blanket, but I'm obviously doing hexagons instead of um, the mitered squares. And I love these. I haven't knit on it in weeks and weeks and weeks uh, because of the RSI, because of a range of different things. Um, but I've really enjoyed knitting on this. So this is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. Um, she tells you there's two different, two different, it you, you buy the ebook. You can't, you don't just buy one single part pattern. You buy the ebook, but the way the pattern's written is that it's the, it's the same for both sizes, like the same stitch count and everything. You're just using different needle sizes and different weight yarn. So I think I'm knitting this on a three millimeter. I think it called for a 3.25 millimeter, but I ended up going down. I swatched, I swatched on a larger size initially, um, because generally speaking, I go up a needle size and I was really unhappy with the fabric I was getting. So I just decided to go all the way down to a three millimeter without think, you know, without even, without, trying a 3.25 millimeter in the middle. I can't remember why um, or what the point of that was. I may not have had a 3.25 millimeter at the time because I was using it for the snowflake 
or maybe I just went no and just I think I, I don't know I don't know what I was thinking but I'm really happy with the fabric I'm getting and it works like I'm not having any trouble because you work from the outside of the hexagon in um, so it, like I said it's a paid for pattern but you get all the little bits so all the little extra patterns so like the half hexagon the tiny little triangle I can't remember what it's called it's an iso isosceles triangle um, the little I don't think I've done one yet oh yeah I have the tiny little corner triangle um, so you get all of that um, and then instructions on how to pick up um, the outside of the blanket <clears throat> and do the edging so um, I'm re I really love it my 10 year old Amelia has claimed it as her own um, the first day I was knitting on it I think it was just after I had this RSI thing with my arm so it was just something little that I could work on and she was watching me knit on it and she said mom what are you working on and I told her and she said it, that's mine Oh, it's not are you knitting it for me and I said no I'm, I'm doing this for dad and I I'll knit you one eventually if you want it but every single time she saw me knitting on it so mommy how's my blanket going <laughs> so I'm knitting this for my Amelia now um, and that's okay she doesn't have um, my oldest daughter was given this beautiful handmade quilt when she was a baby um, it's absolutely gorgeous and she's had that on her bed for the last 13 years. My Amelia has a store-bought one. Um, so I'm happy to do this for her. So then she's got something lovely and handmade on her bed. So, yeah, so it's just scrappy. I've got a friend uh, from the Knitting Guild who happily gave me all of her scraps. Um, and then and another bag full of scraps so that they will go into it as well at some stage which is really cool and all of my scraps um and i'll probably buy some minis as well so this yarn here this is that um the turtle pearls 80s t-shirt yarn and that's how it looks knit up without the slip stitch stripes so it's so much fun i really like that yarn it's really really fun um so yeah so i'm enjoying that i've just got a obviously spend some more time on it because I haven't been on it for a while um but she's in no rush I'm in no rush I'm just it's just one of those things that I'll just pick up and work on um when I feel like it I guess um I did I was using some nitpicks for lychee and it just has just decided to be a pain um so yeah, that was that's where I was up to last time. Cast on another hexagon. But you could knit this in any weight. So I'm doing a fingering weight blanket, but you could knit it in any weight because the instructions are the same. You've just got to find a gauge that works for you. Um, so yeah, I definitely highly recommend it. It's a, a hu it's so much fun. So that's it. That's it for all my works in progress. And I've just got that in my woolen woolen bag, shopping bag because um, I don't have a project bag big enough for it um, so yeah that's it I hope you guys are keeping well um, sorry I'm a bit flat this week I'm just super duper tired yeah so I'll probably talk to you again um, in about a fortnight hopefully I'll have a cardigan finished um, maybe even a snowflake finished um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see where I'm up to in, over the next week and how much time I get for knitting. But, oh, I almost forgot. My friend Diane, um, she's a friend of mine from the Knitting Guild. She went to the States recently. She actually was at Rhinebeck for a day. And she brought me back some yarn. Freed and Caused by Highland Handmade. Isn't that gorgeous? Is I thought I would quickly record if you can hear a weird whir in the background that's the builders soaring framework I think I think um, <laughs> because they've started construction on our new windows so it's been a week since almost a week it's Monday almost a week since I recorded and I still haven't had a chance to upload this yet to YouTube so I thought that I would very quickly 
attach a little update on the end mini episode I guess you could call it and then hopefully depending on what's happening out there I will be able to record properly next week so I have new yarn to show you and um, I noticed that the video cut out um, last week so I wasn't able to show you um, the Highland handmaids properly so I, I'm obviously still having issues with the memory on um, on the iPad and I'm gonna to have to do something about that um, <clears throat> but yeah so I will if I remember I will show you that again next week just so you can have a good look at it it's awesome because it's targy so that was the most exciting bit about it and I think that was the only thing that I wanted to say that got cut out of the last video what can you do um so a quick update on where I'm at with my knitting I'm going to get, I'm only going to show you two things. First off is my snowflake. This is heartbreaking. And the reason why, I mean, it looks fantastic, but the reason that this is heartbreaking is that I'm now at the bottom. I've done, you know, the length for the, the body and I went and bought a new needle and everything so I could do uh, the bottom edge only did only to discover that I have knit the entire thing on a 3.25 millimeter needle it called for a 3.75 and I can't remember what I swatched on if I got gauge on the 3.75 or not um, but I checked my gauge on this this morning and I am so far off I'm thinking that I might just go up to a four, four millimeter and just knit the entire thing on that so um, that has been super frustrating and super disappointing, um, but it happens. So I'll probably leave it until I've got some Christmas knitting done because I'm doing Christmas knitting apparently, um, until I've got some other things sorted and then I'll just start that again. And I think that will just be my, I'm just going to do this over the Christmas break. I'm just going to enjoy knitting on it. And then, because I've I'm denied about ripping it back and doing the, next size up to so the two to four size for my niece um but if i do it properly and if i do it on a four millimeter needle even if it ends up being a little bit bigger by the time she it get you know because i'm knitting the one to two size so even though she'll be like around the 18 18 month mark next year when she wears it she'll still get a bit of wear out of it so and it's canada canada's colder than australia so hopefully she'll get a fair amount of use out of it I have, like, I've seriously am denied about doing the two to four size because it's a few years, but I know, I know that if I was knitting it for my kids, they would get a lot of use out of it because I've knit it, I'd wash it, I'd take care of it, I'd make sure they use it. But I'm, I mean, even though my hand, my sister-in-law um, makes stuff, I'm not sure, um, I'm not sure about whether she how she feels about knitwear if she's the sort of person that would put the kids in what do you know what I mean so I'm just I'm just not sure how knitworthy she is um so I just you know I don't want to have to I don't want to knit a bigger size um and potentially buy more yarn and then have my niece only wear it a couple of times I'd rather knit a smaller size not buy any more yarn and still have my niece only wear it a couple of times does that make sense what i've just said so um so yeah i don't i don't know what i'm gonna do i i'm assuming that i won't i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do it's really frustrating frustrating and somewhat disappointing actually probably more than somewhat disappointing really disappointing I just found yarn I have no idea what yarn that is um but yes it's disappointing so I did get a neat picks order I don't I forgot to bring the other yarn in to show you but you can see it next time I have started a pair of socks for my husband so this is a knit pick stroll in black so um yeah I'm really excited about knitting these he's really excited about it I think he was he's pretty happy with the yarn I'm knitting it on my 2.5 millimeter knit pro zings um i'm actually really enjoying knitting on it this time round. i knit i use the zings 
uh, for my sock blank and I just found that I was con like I was really having to work it um, up over the join and I'm having to do it this time but not it's not as it's not as I'm not having to force the yarn so I don't know if my gauge is loosening or if it's the yarn because the yarn's a bit softer and a little bit more slidey I don't know but anyway so that's that it's not going to be all black I do have some of the stroll tweed in a gray I can't remember the color but I'll show you next time for the leg <clears throat> and foot so it'll just be black cuffs heels and toes and that's it that I just wanted to do a little mini update let you know where I'm at what I've been working on over the last week um my heartache over the snowflake funnily enough I'm not that fussed about it I mean I'm more kind of like I don't really don't want to have to re-knit the, the yoke because that was painstaking but I've done it once I can do it again so and I would rather get it right um and have it fit my knees so it's all good and it will be all good um and I think I've got builders in the house now they were outside sorry before but now I think they're in the house um it's weird it's I, like we renovated our house a couple of years ago and put on the two bedrooms at the back we extended put a new kitchen in put a new toilet in or just really just moved our toilet so we had builders here for like two or three months and it was fine oh they're using the toilet um and that was fine but yeah this is a whole new world um but anyway, that's it for me. Um, and I will talk to you again soon. One of them just used the toilet, which is just out there. So he would have heard me talking to myself. Colour me embarrassed. Oh, I think that'll be the name for this episode. Colour me embarrassed. Although he may think that I'm on the phone. So, all good. Um, anyway, I hope you guys are keeping well. I hopefully will record again next week. And I will sit, talk to you then or soon or something. But... <laughs> Have fun and happy knitting. See ya.